Welcome back. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is data and dive into a little bit of the nuances of the different data structures. So that when we get into those data structures, especially when we get to that skill, it's not going to be like, what is all this stuff, right? We have already laid the foundation and that's the goal of this video. All right. So what is data? Data is information that can be collected, measured, manipulated and analyzed. So we've talked about these a little bit, but we, right, we're just making sure that we're on the same page. It can be numbers, text, images, or other information. So now we're getting a little bit more granular, right? Numbers, text, and then images. It can be sunsets, right? Or what is this other type of information? Well, there's going to be what seems like an endless amount of information. Right? or data structures, right? And that's just, if you're not familiar with these data structures, after a while, you see that you work with certain kinds more often than others, but there's always gonna be these more common and less common data structures. And this is a paramount skill to have because one of the most important things for a data scientist is to work with data, right? <laughs> with the science of data. So we're gonna make sure that all of this is solid as we have this iterative journey and answer these questions along the way. But more importantly, let's answer this question. Data is some kind of information, right? It has no value because it's raw. And it's self-referencing, right? So let's talk about this. Referencing. It's not connected to anything else, right? And that makes it stand alone. So if it's not connected in to any other context, then it really like it doesn't, it's like, not valuable. Right. And but it is malleable, meaning that you can change it. But it lacks integrity. So these are some really important attributes of data. And this is what is data. So I think we're good to go to the next one. Now we know that data is information that can be collected, measured and analyzed. And it could be numbers, text, images or other types of information. But now we're going to get more granular and talk about the two big categories of data, qualitative and quantitative. So what I would suggest here is to think about the root of the world, <laughs> root of the word. So qualitative data, I'm hearing quality, right? So that's the root and it's referring to the descriptive information, right? That is not numbers, text, images. It's, let me put it this way. It's not numbers, right? But it is text, images, or categories. Right, and the, the most famous examples would be colors, names, or labels, right? So these are not numbers. And if it ever does use numbers, they don't have a meaning, right? They're not being, it just kind of like male is one, female is zero, or the other way around, right? These numbers don't represent anything except for male, female, so like genders in this case. So what is quantitative data? So here, quantitative, like quantity, Quantitative data is a numerical information that can be measured or counted because you can do that with numbers, right? You can count your age, how many, what is the collective age of a group of people? What is your height or the median height of a group of people? And the same thing with temperature. You can get the a median temperature, the actual temperature, but it's actually some sort of numerical piece of information like 74 degrees. I wish it was 74 degrees. Okay, so now we're circling back to what is unprocessed versus processed data because we talked about this raw data, right? It has no inherent meaning or value for that matter. And data science process allows us to draw conclusions and gain insights. To be meaningful, the data has to have some sort of dimensionality, connectivity, and transformability. So dimensionality, multiple features or aspects, and I promise we'll get into that. If this is not clear, don't worry, we're going to get into each one of these. Connectivity, the relationships between the data points, 
you remember when we said that the data was isolated, not connected, it had no context? Well, that's why it was not very useful. <laughs> so it needs to be connected and have relationships with data points. That's the beginning of the value. And transformability, the ability to be cleaned and formatted so that we can perform analysis. This is a really big takeaway. Cleaning is where we spend, you would be surprised, like how much time we spend cleaning data. You would think that data science, you may have a data science background, you may already be a data scientist, so you may already have your own understanding of this. In short, it's counterintuitive to think that a data scientist is going to be spending most of their time cleaning data, but it's a thing. So if you didn't know that, we spend a lot of time just doing pre-processing so that we can get to the fun part here of analysis and other cool techniques that are more advanced. As promised, we're going to dive deeper into dimensionality. So here, dimensionality is the number of features or variables in a data set. For example, the dimensions for time can be days, minutes, and seconds. However, in data science, techniques like dimension, dimension reduction or dimensionality reduction are used to simplify the data set. So when you want to reduce the complexity, you can reduce the dimensions by selecting important dimensions such as date and hour without seconds because the context is saying that, hey, we just need to know what day and what hour it was. So we don't need that. So we can reduce the complexity by taking off the dimensionality of seconds in this case. So if you're looking at a data set of cars, for example, you might be thinking of a spreadsheet like this. And you might have attributes like horsepower, weight, and what else? Let's say fuel efficiency, like miles per gallon, right? Um, let me write that. MPG and so on and so on, right? These are the, all the different attributes or dimensions. So the total number of features in the data set, if the data set has three features, for example, horsepower, weight, fuel efficiency, or miles per gallon, it, we can say that this data set has three dimensions. All right, so I said horsepower, weight, and miles per gallon. All right, so this is a good stopping point, and I will see you in the next video when we dive into an example using Google Colab. See you there.